I'm Bridget Bardo. For all you know, your girl behind the counter, and it's Arrow Guru time, y'all. So today we are going to be talking about Mermaid in a Manhole by Hideshi Hino, and why I think it's the perfect Arrow Guru film. Do I have bad taste because I included a guinea pig movie? I'm. I'll be honest. I'm not sure. I'm really questioning myself on this one. <laughs> But I think it's honestly perfect because it manages to combine sensuality with like body horror and grotesqueness. And keep in mind, I said sensuality, I didn't say sexuality. We're not gonna be talking about peen and vagine here. This ain't girl behind the counter only fans, y'all. But it manages to create a sensuality in agony and honestly with consent involved. So anyways, what's this movie about? So, Mermaid in, in a Manhole is one of the guinea pig films. The guinea pig films are pseudo kind of snuff films. Not real snuff films, Charlie Sheen. Right, people. well, do you borrow my brain for five seconds and just be like, dude, can't handle it. Unplug this bastard, yeah. I say that because he tried to report one of them to the police as a real snuff film. But they're not real snuff films, don't worry. And this entry, Mermaid and Manhole, might be either the fourth or the sixth or not even guinea pig film. To be quite honest, jury's out on this one. Um, I tried looking on Wikipedia and just doing general Google searches on this and looking at the IMDb page, and it didn't yield a ton of stuff. And even then, the stuff that it did yield came from like the Way Way Back machine in a very unverified source. So the real problem with researching both foreign films and horror films, not a ton of research on this shit. Anyways, this movie is about an artist named The Artist and a mermaid named the mermaid. And the artist finds a mermaid, guess where? Is it in a manhole? Uh, yes it is. And he decides she is the prettiest mermaid in the entire world, and he's just gotta paint her. And then she's like, I gotta get painted. And then she starts dying in a bathtub. And he's like, oh my God, you're horrifying and beautiful, I still gotta paint you. And she's like, I guess I'll just die then. <laughs> and yeah, then there's a twist at the end, which I will not spoil for you. Anyways, this movie is absolutely perfect in my opinion due to story structure, visuals, acting performances, and overall it manages to create the perfect tone. Anyways, let's get into it. So starting with the plot, it's perfect. Um, this is really just kind of a setup for a ghost story, so characters, motivation, it doesn't matter. It's just serviceable. But it's in service to great visuals. Starting with the gore, by the way, it is a uh, French kiss excellent. Nobuaki Koda is at his best here, and you can tell that he loves doing this. But it's not only that, it's in the set design. I can't believe I'm talking about the guinea pig film set design, but it feels surprisingly lived in. And all of this really shows an attention to detail, which by all means should not be there in a pseudo snuff film. Like this is just, this exists to just sell copies, but there's a real attention to like color and composition and art. Mostly because this is a movie about an artist, so it should show some artistic potential in there. And I think that really, really is highlighted about 28 minutes into the movie where they pull the brakes on this train and they're like, why don't we just spend like 15 seconds looking at red water, blue pus, and a scale? Like, that's it. That's all you're looking at. There's no reason for it to be there but it's in there because you can tell that the director 
likes the way this looks visually and likes the way that these colors combine. There is an attention to detail in there, but it's not only in the beautiful camera work and fantastic effects and color composition, it's also in the performances. <laughs> Even the talent on here is on point. Um, we've got Shigeru Saki, who plays the artist. And, you know, he's really the straight man to all of this. He's like, if we were doing a Marx Brothers thing, he would be none of the Marx Brothers. Uh, he'd be like the cop that they frustrate. But he's really a straight man. And, you know, he's meant to do a job that highlights Mari Somei who plays our mermaid. And you really gotta give her props for this. And I don't think a lot of screen queens get props for the amount of non-verbal acting they have to do. This could have been a very repetitive role with the amount of, you know, laying in a bathtub toplet screaming and flailing that she does. But she manages to make every take interesting. And I think that's a real testament to her. And overall, I think that this combination of no bullshit plot, great visuals, fantastic acting skills really create a sensual, erotic, grotesque film. And if I was to give this movie a rating, which is pointless, you already know what it is, it's five mermaids in bathtubs out of five mermaids in bathtubs. I love this film. This was the thesis statement of this. You came into this video knowing I would love this film. So I'm Bridget Bardo, for all you know, your girl behind the counter, and follow me on Letterbox on Bardo, for all you know, for a shit ton of movies you don't care about, and then follow me at official girl behind the counter for even more movies you don't give a shit about. Anyways, see you in the next videos, counter crew.